Okay. Let's see if there's anything out of alignment. Oh, just gotta pop the wing over. Yeah. So, all good. So, uh, I believe that what you have seen there is uh, definitive proof that sometimes I do screw up. Because a lot of people, are, uh, of you people, are constantly talking about, how does Josh fly his planes around all those trees and not uh, constantly wreck them and lose them? Well, sometimes I screw up. Uh, just don't always show it on camera because sometimes it gets a little boring. Uh, but, anyway... This is a Killcraft Mercury. It's 38, uh, 36 inch span old timer uh, designed by Albert Hatful. It was the predecessor of the famous Senator. Uh, frankly, I think it's the prettier airplane. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's my opinion on that matter. Um, really nice flying airplane. Uh, and I think, frankly, I think it's better flying airplane than the Senator. Some of you will crucify me over that, and I probably deserve it. But I'm entitled to my opinions, even if they're wrong. So, anyway, this is a new uh, new one that we offer. Um, you know, there's been all the excitement over the the re-release of the Killcraft kits under Ripmax, and uh, they've got some very nice stuff. But I thought it was time to grab one that they have not really done anything with and so uh you know there's this bird and um there you go all right let's try this again ah much better centering on the field well it was Maybe not anymore. See if I get stuck in a tree this time, too. Yep. Totally. Oh, it's going to be extra good. Crud. So, we actually did get this back. I used a bulldozer to knock it part way down, hence what happened to the tree there. You guys don't get too upset, that tree is going to go away eventually because this can get sold. Um, but anyway, it was all the way up the top of the tree there, the farther tree. Um, and I was able to nudge it about 10 feet down by uh, kicking it with the bulldozer. And then finally I had to climb on top of the bulldozer and... Uh, pry it down with a pole and as you can tell it's you can probably hear the wind uh, which is a major factor in getting it back um, anyway I knocked the rudder loose last night but um, that's easy uh, main thing is I poked a few holes in the covering and this was a really nice covering job so that kind of bugs me but at least I've got the plane back and it looks like there's nothing other than tissue repairs so it'll be a couple hours of patching stuff and then we'll be good to go so oh oh i do have a structural repair to make yeah no biggie all right so it is all back together looking good i should mention how the, how the dethermalizer works i think most of you have seen how these run but so what we're gonna do is lock that in and then we will nope i got it wrong here on video brilliant all right so you gotta pull the mouse trap arm over and then you latch onto the bottom of the mouse trap like that now we turn our timer arm over here and loop the rubber band over that and it gradually works its way around, slowly but surely, until almost there. Come on. It's supposed to take a long time, so there is that. But it's cold out here, 
So this one's taking the extra long time. Bam. There you go. So that's how it goes. Alright, so since this airplane has patches on it, like right there, and here, and here, and uh, like I recovered everything over here. Um, only structural damage was right here. This uh, canopy rail snapped in. Um, and that actually is structural because this is a load-bearing member since the tension of the rubber motor works on that. Um, and the lower rails just end into that upright, whereas this one carries load into the laundry run. So this is a very critical structural member. So you want to really watch those uh, tops of your canopy because that's actually a structural member. And on full-scale airplanes, uh, a lot of your high-wing bush planes is the same arrangement. But anyway, uh, that was the only structural damage. Um, prop is a little dinged up at the tips, but nothing big. Um, so anyway, uh, since I have changed some things here, I'm going to basically start fresh, and we'll show a little bit of basic flight checkout. Not necessarily trimming unless it needs it, but uh, definitely some checkout. So we are all CG'd up, or... Uh, set up here so we're gonna fly just to a test glide i should mention the only trimming i did to this airplane at all was to add that shim there and it's covered up in tissue now so you can't even really tell it um, it did need a little a good bit of down thrust um, but i've not touched the cg or incident settings at all and the airplane just flies perfectly as you've seen from the previous videos so it's not the most graceful landing airplane um but that's enough of a test glide that I can tell where we need to be um, because that's how it flew before. All right, so we're gonna wind this rascal up. Um, why I'm kind of going through this, even though, you know, minor repairs, the fact is I did recover a panel of my wing here. Um, and anytime you do that or recover a sub substantial part of a stab, or a substantial portion of your aft fuselage, you can change the incident settings and the warps on the airplane enough that it becomes an issue, and so you need to uh, check out the airplane again and make sure that it's all right. Uh, it appears, partly because I use very hard wood on this airplane for the most part, uh, that I get everything about right. Um, and I should mention, I did not build light. I used very hard wood on almost all of this. I used medium weight wood on the ribs, so kept it fairly light there, nothing spectacular, but I was not trying to build this light. I wanted a very rugged airplane, and uh, performance has not suffered. So, um, you all know me for building very light, but the reality is, uh, in the rough and tumble of a contest airplane, um, it's good to have a, light, a, a calm weather airplane that's built very light to get those major dead air times and whatnot. Uh, but you need, before you build your lightweight plane, you always want to have something in your quiver that's rugged for dealing with 20 mile an hour winds or more um, and rough fields and all that. And this airplane does that and it still performs very well. So you could have this as an all-rounder very easily. Uh, anyway, um, I use a Garamy clutch on this one, so I mean... Uh, you can use a nascent clutch, uh, which on the Gypsy I use that, which is a larger airplane than this. But anyway, the way it works is you've got this little latch that swings here. You have to really watch this when you're loading the rubber motor, that you make sure that this is engaged, because this is not an auto-engage like the nascent clutch. And if you don't have that engaged and you let tension go onto the motor, this shaft, if it's back like uh, this, that shaft will go spinning around and it will cut your hand open like crazy. I don't care how much you smooth it out. Um, one of the members of uh, Totoma, uh, last year I think it was, had a, uh, a shaft embed itself in his hand when the uh, Garamy clutch failed on his airplane. It didn't just fail to engage, it failed entirely. Um, and that was a, I, I had been aware of that problem, but it was just a reminder that that's not something you want to mess with. Uh, mine is bound on with uh, spider wire hardened with CA. Uh, so the load on that is never going to be enough to pull it completely loose. So it'll so should it ever become compromised, um, I'll have warning in advance that it's about to let go. So I can put my hands around that without concern because that thing is going to let me know long in advance that it's loosened up. Um, that does mean I have to inspect that regularly. Uh, nascent clutches you should inspect as well. 
uh, because they too can let go and pull out, and then you've got a, a real meat cleaver on your hands there too. Um, and the problem is, typically when you're gripping this, you're gripping it around here with the web of your hand right there, um, and that's a really great target for those rascals. So anyway, I'm just uh, hand winding this to get a few turns on, and we'll see where we go. Um, this motor should take about seven, eight hundred turns. On four hundred turns, it's doing about a minute and a half in dead air, which is not half bad. So, um, in theory, it's about a three and a half minute airplane, possibly more. Could be quite a bit more, because I'm sure you could squeeze more out of that. Uh, also, this, you know, this is twenty strands of one eighth, which is absolutely absurd on a thirty-six inch plane. Um, but I've got it, because, um, I mean, it's only a 14-inch prop. Um, if you had a larger prop, because this size, you could put a larger prop, and then that, that power would be a little more reasonable. Uh, like on my Remoffet, my Remoffet is about the same size as this. It's actually less wing area. It's a, uh, about the same wing loading. Um, and I'm running it on 22 strands, but I'm running it on a much bigger prop. So uh, this thing is a bit of a, this is a real hot rod of an airplane. And there we go. Ready launch on my part. And she's getting away like she's supposed to. Real nice pattern. And out of juice there. Oh yeah, look at that. Just majestic. Kind of a fast flyer, but very nice. In the discussion of what makes the best, uh, or what is the best beginner's outdoor rubber model, um, I would be hard pressed to find an airplane that I like more than this one. Uh, what keeps this out of first place at the moment uh, is two things. One, it's not currently available as a full kit, so it's a short kit from us. Um, I plan on working on remedying that, so that'll happen at some point in the future. We've got the plans to put this into production as a uh, semi-beginner's rubber model. Um, the other thing is currently you're locked down to a carved prop. So at present I'm going to have to include a carved prop blank in that kit when I release it um, that you're then going to have to carve out. Uh, I'm working on sourcing large enough plastic propellers that you can do that. Um, and I think we can do that in a way that's reasonable. It's just that you'll have to add uh, some ballast to the tail to get the airplane to balance. And that's fine. That's not really a big deal. That's something we can work with. Um, also, I should mention, when we do release a kit for this, we will, in fact, be able to include Isaki tissue with it. Uh, I've got a source for that that's uh, coming up. So once we have the Isaki in hand, we'll be able to start releasing full kits for this airplane. I've got a little bit of hardware I've got to deal with as well. It's not going to be a cheap kit because I want to include good stuff in it. I want to include good hardware for the uh, you know bushings for your wheels and your nose bearing and all that, uh, prop shaft, etc. Uh, we've got some issues on prop shaft acquisition and whatnot. Um, but the, the bottom line is all that will be available. It's not a small beginner's model. I mean, this is a substantial machine. Um, so like I said, it's not going to be a cheap kit, but I think it'll be uh, something that those of you who um, are able to justify the expenditure, you'll be rewarded with a, a very good airplane. In the meantime, there's a short kit. You can build the airplane, so if you're comfortable with acquiring the, the hardware to make it fly, you're good to go. This is a very, very good performing airplane. It's viceless. You set the CG and off you go. Um, incident settings are about right. Uh, I did have, I do have a little bit of wash in in that right wing tip. Yes, wash in, um, and that that holds that wing up real nice at high power, which is something you want. So, anyway, let's fly it again. There, DT set. We'll launch it up. There we go. Much better. High, high overhead. The DT can go any time now. And there he goes, right on time. See what it lands on top of.
Oh, should be okay. Nope, my cedar tree. <laughs> it's my it's my goofy cat in her <laughs> in her default condition. Hi. <laughs> Something else that y'all have probably seen, besides my feral kids, uh, is that we have these things over here, which I have not shown on video. Um, yeah, I have guineas, and we all kind of think the guineas are stupid, and they're a pain in the neck, uh, but they do a great job of containing the ant population, so I let them do their thing, and they roost on top of there. Also, there's very noisy single engine plane. I can't tell what that is. Maybe a, I think it's an A36 Bonanza. I don't know. Anyway, Caleb has just chased the poor birds away from their roost. Oopsies. And we've got 10 of them, and then we've also got uh, nine younger ones in there. Uh, all of those come from the mom and pop in the uh, group here, because all the others got killed by critters uh, this summer, hawks and whatnot. It's a pain in the neck, but is what it is. Alright, here we go. And down we come. All right, guys, so there you have it, Albert Hatful's beautiful, beautiful Mercury. Um, as I have said before, personal biased opinion, I think this is the best of all of Albert Hatful's designs. I think it is the one. Uh, I think it's better than the Senator, and as Ross Clements said, <laughs> and I will die on that hill, um, like, is that just my opinion? Um, there are a lot of great designs out there. This just happens to be one that I really like. And I'm the only person who's had the guts to do a kit of it in any form. So, um, it's there. It's the Forgotten Plane. It was a commercial failure because it was introduced just at the wrong time. And only two years later, the Senator was introduced and it was at the right time. And... You know, they made millions of them. So, this is the one that you've never seen, so you can have something that flies great. Um, and it'll also be the only one at the field, because you very rarely will you see another one. Anyway, uh, check out the Mercury on our website as a short kit. Um, plans are sold separately. Uh, there'll be links for both. Um, and like and subscribe and, you know, all, all the stuff. <laughs> Uh, let us know what you think and what else you'd like to see. We'll see you. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.